Giving a research presentation isn't that easy. How do you adequately convey your research to an audience in a short amount of time? Sometimes you fumble on your words, sometimes you don't know what to say, and sometimes people will ask you questions that you just don't know the answer to. So, what do you do? Hi, my name is Darian Nguyen, and I'm here to give you some tips and advice on how to ace your next science presentation. You're probably asking me, Darian, what makes you a qualified individual to give me some tips and advice? Why should we listen to you? That's a good question. I don't know. Don't. Well, I used to be a research technician and I sat through a lot of good presentations and a lot of bad presentations. So here's everything compiled in one video that I noticed what really works. When it comes down to presenting your research, try not to have a vague title. What's the take home message of your presentation? Being an all-star affects the cerebellum. Okay. The title's too vague. There we go. That is a more specific title. Also, notice how the font is different. The standard fonts for presentations are Times New Roman, Arial, as well as Comic Sans for individuals with dyslexia. Make sure you're consistent with the text fonts throughout your presentation. On the title slide, I also like to add my lab's name, the department, institution, and the institutional logos. After your title slide, give a brief introduction of the project background. This section also gives your audience the broader impact of your research and why your research is important. Wait, something's wrong with this slide. There's just so much text. Call the police. We have to call the police. Whoa! That's more like it. Leave out all the fluff and bullet only the main points. All the fluff will come from you when you're talking. Make sure you cite your sources. If more than three people contributed to that paper, use the first author's last name followed by et alia, then the year was published. When abbreviating et alia, always include a period. Everyone always forgets about it. I don't know why. Although it's a Latin word, it's commonly used. Therefore, you don't need to italicize it. When talking about human patients, refrain from saying normal humans. Instead, say healthy. Specifically for the brain, say neurotypical brain. Don't say normal brain. Just don't. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. The next slide is your hypothesis or research question. This slide shouldn't be too fancy. The goal is to showcase your research question so that the audience can think about it as well. Next is your research methods. This slide serves as a blueprint of your experiment and how you went about collecting and analyzing your data. For this, I like to use a flowchart. I change the color of the boxes after I'm done presenting the data for each section. We then dive into each section from the flowchart. Here, I'm discussing how we generated our mouse model. Remember to always italicize gene names. Did you see that? See how I'm using the laser pointer? If you have a chance, use a laser pointer. Use it to guide the viewer's eyes. Don't, don't do this. See, that's what my problem kicks in at. Even though the bulk of your presentation will consist of data, don't throw too much on one slide. Spread it out on multiple slides. I like to limit each slide to three to four images or graphs. Just like that. Make sure to thoroughly explain what the audience is seeing. For this Western block, describe the expression of all star for each genotype. For the spar graph, explain the x-axis, the y-axis, the color of the bars, and the significance of this data. Somewhere on your slide, you should state the sample size. Always make sure to italicize the letter N. People always forget that. When showing stained images, avoid using red and green together. This is to accommodate for individuals that are red-green colorblind. These are my go-to colors. Green, gray, magenta. Can you say magnetic? And cyan. Label your stainings and define any abbreviations on your slide. Whoa, good job. I love this color scheme. For any image, always include a scale bar with the appropriate units. Next is your discussion or conclusion slide. This area is where you list all your main findings. Keep it simple, and don't make it too overwhelming. Future directions. What's next for your project? List out goals and verbally explain how that will add value to your story or research. I also like to add a little timeline to show when I'm planning to meet these goals. The final slide should always be the acknowledgement slide. Have a list of your faculty mentors, lab members, collaborators, and funding support. I also like to add a picture of our lab to this slide. And that's it for the PowerPoint presentation. Good job! The last part is a Q&A. Make sure you read all relevant literature to your project. Oh, looks like we got a question. Hi, Margaret here. Love the presentation. Phenomenal job. Back on slide 32, you had a picture of a mouse cerebellum, right? I want to know, how are you so cute? You are just so adorable. How? Whenever someone asks you a question, make sure you repeat the question, just in case someone didn't hear it. 
that will also buy you some time to formulate an answer. And then, proceed. Uh-oh, looks like Darian doesn't know the answer to the question. Don't fret. The key thing is to never fake an answer. Just be honest and say something like this. I actually don't know the answer, but that's a really good question and I'll look into it. Have you ever had a dream that... If you that get nervous, you, um, pause and take a breath. And if you fumble on a word or make a mistake, don't dwell too much on it and move on. What truly sells a presentation is having confidence, a positive attitude, and showing the audience how passionate you are about your project. Giving this type of presentation could be nerve wracking. So the key thing is to practice, practice, practice. And over time, you'll build confidence. Alrighty, well that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please like, subscribe, and also turn on the bell notification. So in my last video, a lot of you guys commented a shrimp emoji, and I want to give a huge shout out to all you guys. Marina S, No Cherry, Fool, Jamie Martinez, In Bed with a B, Catherine B, Dane, Gatami Dirt, Kavina Kavina Kavina, Angelina Loretta, Anna Marie, Anchovies, Azir A, Kelly Wynn, Joanna Angulo, and Amira Bates. So I forgot to mention, if you want a shout out in the next video, please comment down a graph emoji. The graph that's like going up. Up, not the one that's going down. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Whew.